All right. I think we are good. <clears throat> Sweet. All right. What's up, everybody? This is Scout Kingdom Gold I'm trying a little bit of a new setup here. Um, so forgive me for any uh, late starts. Okay. All right. So what we're talking about tonight, okay? Um, <clears throat> First off, if you haven't read the book, um, Expert Secrets by Russell Brunson, um, phenomenal book. Definitely go, definitely go check it out because it's probably going to change the way you view your interactions with people. Okay. Um, especially from a marketing side. So what we're talking about tonight is how do you make your customer feel like an idiot? Okay. Now I know that sounds a little counterintuitive and maybe even, uh, I don't know, arrogant maybe, um, but we're talking about it in a good way. Okay. And I'm going to, and I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, hone in on that here in just a second. So the first thing you have to understand, okay, people do not want your product. Okay. They don't want your service. They don't want whatever you're providing. What they want is the answer to their problem. Okay. They want the answer to their problem. So what I mean by that is let's say they have a problem with um, snakes under their house. Okay. I don't know why that popped in my head, but here we are. Let's say they had a problem with snakes under their house. They don't care that you are a, you know, a pest control company or a herpetologist or um, maybe you're uh, uh, Steve Irwin himself. Okay. They don't care about any of that. All they know is they want the snakes gone as fast as possible. Okay. They don't care that you are, you know, some homegrown product. They don't care about blah, blah, blah. Okay. Whatever they cared are the snakes getting out of my house. Okay. So whatever problem they are, they are, uh, and when I say problem, you know, problem, need, want, it's all the same thing. Okay. Those are going to fall into one of three categories. Okay. Health, wealth, or relationships. Health, wealth, or relationships. Wow, I wrote that really crooked. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, so what they are wanting, these are what we... <clears throat> These are what we call the three core desires, okay? And your product, your solution, your, uh, your service that you provide should fit into one of these categories, okay? So are you a healthcare product? Are you a, um, a, a beauty product? You know, maybe that would go into relationships, okay? Are you a cleaning service, okay? Um, what is it that you are providing? Okay. And when you, when you really clue into what need you are focusing on for your customers, then you can make them start to feel like an idiot. Okay. And what do we mean by that? We want your cus your customers. This is you. Okay. And this is your customer. You know, he's neither happy nor sad. Okay. He's just kind of there, right? You want your customer to be so satisfied with you and your product and your service, you want your customers so satisfied with the value that you provide them that they would feel like an idiot to not use you, to not repeat, and to not be a repeat customer, to not recommend you to their friends and family. Okay. That is the goal that you are that you are striving for, right? And it's going to tie in, okay, to one of these three core desires. All right. Now I forgot my eraser, so I'm just going to have to use my hand and here we go. Okay. So that's the three core desires. We got to remember that. Okay. Now when we're talking about how do you make your customer feel like an idiot, why would they feel like an idiot to not use you? I tell my, my clients, um, the people that, you know, ask me advice, things like that. I tell them all the time, what is it? that makes you different than your competition. So you have, uh, let's take, um, what's a good example? A, let's take a cleaning company, okay? Cleaning. Okay, there's lots of people that offer cleaning and there's lots of services, okay? So let's say, for example, you put on your car, your service offering mop the floors. 
Okay, you're going to mop the floors. Well, guess what? Every other cleaning company on the planet is going to do that as well. Okay, so does that really set you apart? No. Okay, what sets you apart? Well, maybe, okay, you wipe cabinets. Maybe you wipe the cabinets. Hmm, do you think there's any other cleaning services that wipe cabinets? Yeah, probably so. Okay, so that is not going to set you apart. Okay, what about, oh, I don't know, dusting ceiling fans? But you know, I bet some, hmm, I bet you there's some other cleaning companies that do that too. So that's not going to help you. So how do you differentiate yourself for your customers? Well, what if you did something cool like this? Maybe you left a little uh, thank you treat bag, like maybe some candies or something. Maybe you did that after your, uh, after each cleaning. Okay. Now that I haven't seen before. Okay. So that's what differentiates you. What about exceptional communication? Except com. <laughs> it looks like except.com. What about exceptional communication? Okay, what about that? Hmm. You know, I have problems with communication with people that I hire all the time. Okay, so this would be a big one for me if I was a customer. Okay. What about, um, let's see, what's something else? What about um, maybe a time guarantee, okay? Maybe I'll just draw a little, a little clock. What about a time guarantee? What if you could say, like, we will guarantee your house clean in two hours or three hours or whatever it is, okay? That's pretty cool. So now what you're doing, okay, you are taking this side of the chart right here. And you are differentiating yourself from the rest of your competition so that you can dominate your competition, okay? Go read 10X Rule by Grant Cardone. Um, I can't say enough good things about it. Uh, no, I don't get paid. <laughs> I wish I did because I talked about it a lot. But you got to go read 10X Rule, and it'll kind of explain what I'm talking about when I say dominate your competition, okay? So you want to provide some, and this, this is stuff that is not really costly, okay? It's not really costly to do a, a quick turnaround on a job or to have exceptional communication and, you know, a little bag of candy or whatever that is, just some kind of little thank you note, something. Um, that's not very expensive. So we're not talking about, you know, we're certainly not talking about lowering prices, okay? We're not, never, never, never compete on price, ever. Never compete on price. What you compete on is value, okay? And when you start really differentiating yourself from your competition like this, and you start coming up with new ways to, to, to provide value for your customers. One thing that I do for my cleaning service is, is a checklist, Okay, because sometimes, you know, okay, maybe you're not home. We, uh, you know, you don't know, did your cleaning people really clean your house type stuff? Well, we do a checklist, okay? We say, okay, we do this, this, we, we give you a sheet and we say, these are the things that we've agreed upon we're going to do. And as we do them, we check, the, check off the list, okay? I think that's pretty cool because now the customer knows exactly what they've gotten, all right? So that, these are some kind of things that I've incorporated into, into my services, okay? So what are some things, you got to really think about this. What are some things that you can do? Again, it doesn't have to be super expensive, right? But what are some things that you can do to differentiate yourself from everyone around you? Um, there, God, this, this, is, <laughs> this is why I'm doing this for a living, okay? So, you know, there's just so much potential when you have two restaurants and they're competing with each other or two to, uh, I don't know, supplement companies or to um, uh, Walmart and neighborhood grocery, you know, things like that. There's so much potential to differentiate yourself from your competition because you're doing the things that your competition is not willing to do, okay? And I promise you, when you start doing these things, you're going to start seeing levels of success that you've never done before, that you've never seen before, okay? So now, how do you determine 
what is going to make your customer feel like an idiot for not choosing you, okay? So what you have to do is understand your industry for one. You know, this works for cleaning. This works for online sales. It works for network marketing. It works for, uh, you know, brick and mortar type retail places. It works for all of that, okay? What makes you different than anyone else? Say, so, well, we care about my, we care, we really care about our customers. Okay. How do you show that you care? Hmm. Maybe we send a birthday letter. It's really hard to write on a whiteboard from this angle. <laughs> okay. But maybe you send a birthday letter for your customers. Okay. Um, because that goes into showing your customers that you care. Okay. What about, um, we have the absolute best product on the market, hands down. Well, that's not going to do any good if nobody really knows that, right? So what if you made some YouTube content and you actually had tutorials and showed your customers how to use your product, okay? Does that cost you anything? No. All it costs is time and energy, right? So it doesn't cost you anything to do that. What if you have the best service on the market? Maybe you could do the same thing. Maybe you could even, um, maybe you could even have like interviews with the people that are working for you. Okay. And those interviews will show people like, Hey, these guys really know what they're talking about. They care about people. Um, and it's not just like you on the platform, right? You're actually highlighting the people that are working for you. That does a lot of things, builds customer loyalty. It builds employee loyalty, the whole thing. This is probably a very underutilized piece. Okay. But you got to send out the right messages. All right. What if you're trying to really What's the right way to say this? What if you're really trying to hone in on the relationship's core desire? Okay. Well, show how your product or your service can help their relationships. Okay. Um, maybe show them a good relationship. Maybe show them, uh, you know, customer testimonials. You know, hey, well, we went through this program. It helped our relationship, helped our marriage, things like that. And that is the type of stuff. Whenever you start doing the things that no one else will do and you really start differentiating yourself from your competition, these are the things that people say, hey, I would be an absolute fool not to go with them. I would be an absolute idiot if I picked anybody else but them to go do my job or to go fit my need. Okay, remember the three core desires, all right? You want to hone in on those three core desires so precisely but that your customer feels like an idiot if they don't choose you, if they don't give you money. And another thing too, just be just to clarify this, okay? When I said never communicate on, I'm sorry, never communicate, never compete on price, okay? Whenever you do this stuff, they're going to give you the price that you're offering because they are receiving the value so much more than what they think they're paying for. Then they're going to again. I would be a fool not to go give Scott my money or whoever my money. Okay. Think about the people that you want to deal with. Okay. Have you ever had a sales rep that just went above and beyond to meet your need? Have you ever had a hairstylist or someone cleaning your house or someone cutting your grass or a plumber or, you know, just any of those things. Okay. Have you ever had something that where people went above and beyond? And what did you do? You remembered, right? You remembered, hey, they really took care of me last time. I'm going to keep going back to them every time I need this particular thing. Okay? So that's what we're talking about tonight, okay? So whenever you're, whenever you're, what's the right word? Whenever you're trying to figure out how to market your idea, your product, your service to your customers, okay? Remember, what of the three core desires are you really honing in on? That's number one. And number two, how can you do the things that your competitors will not? Because I promise you, once you start doing those things, okay, all that business is going to start funneling to you. And then you're going to be amazed at how successful you're going to be in a short amount of time. Okay. So this is kind of a high level overview of what I like to call make your customers feel like an idiot. Okay. Um, in a good way, 
in a good way. Okay. So, um, I'll have plenty more videos on this, uh, like subscribe, follow, whatever, <laughs> whatever you feel like doing. But guys, look, this is the kind of stuff that I really want to help people understand because I think a lot of people are afraid to start their own businesses because they're afraid of getting customers and competition and whatever. But look, it doesn't take much to do what your competition will not do. I promise you it is easier than you think if you just put your mind to it. Okay. So talk to you guys later.